Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar, Leading the Way as a Landowner. Uh, my name is Kelly Johnson, and I'm the Habitat Stewardship Specialist for Carolinian Canada, and I um, deliver the Landowner Leader Program for Carolinian Canada. So who is Carolinian Canada Coalition and what do we do? Since 1984, Carolinian Canada Coalition, which is a registered charity, has been leading eco has been a leading eco-regional group in Canada. The goal of our organization is essentially to protect the unique nature of southern Ontario. More specifically, our mission is to protect and restore the natural heritage of the Carolinian life zone for healthy, sustainable landscapes through stewardship, cooperation, and research. We have a big picture vision and focus our efforts throughout and across the region, partnering with different organizations, businesses, and individuals. So what exactly do we do at Carolinian Canada? I'm just going to cover the ecosystem recovery program to begin with so that you know where the Landowner Leaders program comes from and where it ties into our other programs. Our ecosystem recovery program um, or the conservation action planning program um, is one of our major programs and our conservation action plans or what we call CAPS serve to strengthen and coordinate the greening efforts of existing agencies, organizations, and local groups. And each CAP is tailored to the area in which it is developed by the CAP team. At this time, almost the entire Carolinian life zone is covered by a conservation action plan. And I'll show you a map in just a moment of where those conservation action plans actually are on the landscape. So nearly 100 organizations have contributed to the development and the implementation of CAPS within the Carolinian Life Zone. Some of our partners have included um, NGOs such as land trusts, field naturalists, woodlot owners, and stewardship groups. Our partners have also been conservation authorities, governments and municipalities, First Nations, um, the agricultural community, and some of their organizations such as Federations of Agriculture or Christian Farmers Organization, also business and industry, and local communities and landowners. So that last point is very important for the conservation action plans. Each CAP team is made up of all of these different partners, but also landowners from the specific area. So landowners have input into the objectives that are identified within each conservation action plan. So rather than some of our partners or government dictating what needs to be um, specified within each conservation action plan, such as the conservation targets or conservation objectives, landowners in each community have a say into what the objectives should be, and they're able to give their feedback and incorporate that into each conservation action plan. So that's very important. This is just a map to show you where the conservation action plans actually are on the ground. So um, there's the Sydenham River, the Lake St. Clair Coastal Cap, the Rondo Erie Coast Cap, Elgin Greenway, Upper Thames River, Grand River, um, as well as others. And some are just being finalized um, as we speak, actually. So Carolinian Canada's role in conservation action planning is to facil facilitate the development of the CAPs and to help coordinate and find resources for CAP implementation. So each CAP has a number of objectives that have been identified by the partners who have worked on developing the CAP, and we look to find resources for the implement implementation of these objectives. We also work to monitor and evaluate um, each CAP. Carolina and Canada's approach is to build good relationships between sectors and groups and individuals. We encourage community participation by including individual landowners in the CAP development, and we work together toward common goals as identified in the conservation action plans. And that brings us to our Landowner Leaders Program, because just as landowners are a very important part of the conservation action planning process, they are important as on-the-ground leaders. The Landowner Leaders Program provides opportunities to learn more about becoming a good steward, setting goals for habitat projects, and help in developing and implementing a Carolinian Habitat Action Plan for individual properties. 
The Landowner Leaders Program aims to build a broad network of landowners across the Carolinian life zone. These landowners will be contributing to ecosystem recovery based on good science by helping to fulfill the objectives in our conservation action plan. Through the program, landowners will have access to the best available resources and tools as we connect them to our various partner organizations to implement on-the-ground work. Landowner leaders will also be leaders in their own communities in respect to stewardship activities. Landowner leaders can be rural landowners, they can be urban landowners, businesses, or institutions. Carolinian Canada staff will help landowners decide what habitat is on their property um, that is important to steward and restore, and this will be based on our conservation action plan objectives. We will also link landowners with experts and agencies who will assist them with on-the-ground implementation of their project um, or projects if they have more than one. We can also assist landowners with accessing funding support for their projects. Many funding sources require a not-for-profit applicant and we can act as that organization for our landowner leader um, participants where funding sources exist for specific projects. Carolinian Canada will work with our landowner leaders to lead, mentor, and inspire other landowners who are interested in stewardship activities in their communities. And this is one of the most important aspects of the landowner leaders program. We will also help landowners to monitor the progress of their stewardship and restoration work and will help them to evaluate their efforts and to monitor to see if any changes need to be made in their project. So this slide just outlines the process of the Landowner Leaders Program. So the first step in the process is to attend a workshop or a webinar similar to this one. Once you've attended the workshop or the webinar, then you're looking to identify objectives for your land. You fill out an expression of interest form, so this identifies what your objectives are and some of your goals for your specific project. A property inventory is also um, a part of the Landowner Leaders program, however, this depends on resources that either Carolinian Canada has or you have as a landowner leader yourself. You also can complete a significant species self-evaluation, and this is basically a table that focuses on target species or important species on your particular property and evaluates um, actions that you're taking currently on your property. And then you fill out a Carolinian Habitat Action Plan, and that action plan is reviewed by Carolinian Canada staff. And I'll delve into what exactly the Carolinian Habitat Action Plan is um, in just a little bit. Once you have completed your Carolinian Habitat Action Plan, and from now on I'll refer to it as a CHAP, then you start to implement your project with different partners on the ground, which we will help to connect you with. Once your CHAP is actually implemented, then you will begin monitoring of your CHAP, so evaluating the progress of your plan. And lastly, you will participate in program representation. And again, I'll go into the program representation in further detail. So the Carolinian Habitat Action Plan, sorry, I think I've skipped a slide here, yep. The Carolinian Habitat Action Plan is basically a blueprint or a map for what you want to do on your property in terms of stewardship. A CHAP also helps you determine the funds that will be required and where those are going to come from as well as timelines for your goal. So when you're making this blueprint or your map, we're looking for three key actions um, to help habitat. The first might be saving habitat, so habitat protection, and this might involve saving existing habitats or species on your property. The second key action is stewardship or habitat improvement. This could include practices like controlling invasive species, maybe Phragmites or purple loosestrife, providing nesting boxes for birds and bats, and building a snake hibernaculum. And the third key action is seeding or habitat creation. This could involve things like planting trees, establishing a grassland or tall grass prairie, or constructing a wetland. So as you can see, by each of these three actions, anybody can participate in the Landowner Leaders Program, whether you're a rural landowner, or whether you're an urban landowner, whether you're a business, or whether you're an institution. And each of the projects have varying degrees of financial requirements. So again, this program is available to people who have limited funds who still want to participate. Um, Carolinian Canada staff will review the CHOPs which are submitted. 
Um, and approval of a CHOP is based on the use of best management practices for the habitat and the species on a property. An excellent resource when developing your CHOP is the Rural Landowner Stewardship Guide, and this document is available on our website or as a hard copy, and I'll provide contact information at the end of the presentation. After a CHOP is reviewed by Carolinian Canada staff, the landowner will either move into our ambassador stream or the participant stream, and I'll discuss the two streams um, in a minute and what the difference is between them. So once your CHOP is complete and it's being reviewed by staff and approved and you've moved into either the ambassador or the participant stream, then Carolinian in Canada will connect you with experts in your area in order to implement your project on the ground. We may connect you with Conservation Authority, Ducks Unlimited, Ministry of Natural Resource, or Stewardship Council if they still exist in your area, or we might connect you with industry partners. So people who actually have um, businesses doing some of these different things such as restoration. Once your CHOP is implemented and the project is on the ground, then we will help you to monitor your plan's progress. Um, you will be required to provide an annual update. So in the update, we'll be looking to see if the actions in the CHOP are still appropriate for your property. We'll be looking to see if, actions, if the actions are helping you to meet your objectives or whether we need to change some of your actions. We'll be looking to see if you need further assistance from Carolinian Canada or any of the partners for further implementation or for the monitoring. We will, the annual update will also help us to highlight the successes and challenges of the program. It will also help us to provide information about the achievements um, to, the wider, to the broader public, to our board of directors, um, and to our funding partners. And the annual report um, will help us to assess representation of the program. So we'll be looking to see um, whether you are still following your conservation action plan and whether that plan still fits with what the goals of our organization are. And that brings us to program representation. So this is where the program is split into the two streams, ambassadors and participants. Um, so after we review your Carolinian Habitat Action Plan, we will be looking to see whether you fit into the ambassador stream um, or the participant stream. In the ambassador stream, then you will be involved in program representation, whereas in the participant stream, you will be working with partners to implement your program project and monitoring its progress. However, you may not be um, involved in program representation to such a degree that the ambassadors are. So landowner leaders ambassadors will share stories um, with other landowners that can help to empower and build awareness of projects that are happening on the ground, basically sharing good news stories with the broader public. Program representation also brings attention to the positive impacts landowners are having on the landscape, so we want to let people know what is being done and what's happening in their communities and in their neighborhoods. We will work with landowner leader ambassadors to identify opportunities where they can share their stories. So this might um, be through our online profiles, which you can cur currently view on our website. It might be an article in your local newspaper. You might be asked to do one-on-one -on -one talks with landowners. You may be asked to speak at workshops. Some of our landowner leaders that we currently have are speaking at our event on April 18th in London, and they're hosting a session about the Landowner Leaders Program. Um, and you may also be asked to host a tour on your property um, to welcome the public or to welcome a specific group to show what is actually being done on your land. Of course, all of these different activities are optional. Um, and so it's up to you what you participate in. If you're not big on speaking in public, then you won't be asked to speak at a workshop or you won't be required to speak at a workshop. Uh, you might be more comfortable with the online pro profiles or an article in the newspaper or simply hosting a tour on your property. But again, any of these items under program representation are optional. We basically want our landowner leaders to act as ambassadors of the program. So again, sharing those good news stories with the broader public, um, their neighbors, and their communities. We currently have six landowner leaders spread across the Carolinian life zone. 
um, and throughout um, in many different counties. So we have the Ainsleys down in Essex. We have the Shepherds up in Lambton County, the Beneshecks in Chatham-Kent, Cavanys in Elgin, um, the Kassiers in Elgin as well, and Boothbys in Norfolk. So again, we're looking for um, a number of landowner leaders to be spread across the landscape um, in the Carolinian Life Zone. And then how does the Landowner Leader Program help our partners? So we help our partners to recruit landowners for stewardship actions. Uh, we can also provide assistance in planning projects. Of course, um, project planning is a large undertaking, so the more help and assistance that we can provide in helping landowners to actually plan their specific projects, we believe that this will help our partners. We can also help our partners to secure funding for specific projects. Um, to help these projects get on the ground. And we can also, this, sorry, the Landowner Leaders Program will also help our partners to share good news stories. So getting the word out, um, bringing to light different things that are happening on the landscape, and hopefully getting more landowners interested in participating in stewardship activities. So that is um, the end of the information piece for our webinar. If you have any questions, you can submit them um, in the chat or the question section, and we will try to answer them as we go.